guys, what's up? Hope you have been having fun making some great art. Today, I want to share with you a tutorial video that I did a while ago for Imagine FX magazine. It shows the complete art process that I used from my research phase to the finished mood painting. The focus was not to make a highly detailed rendering, but more about organic researching process that I like to use for me to find the right visual language. So let's get right into it. Today, I will lead you through this step-by-step -step workshop from extracting building textures to completing a final art piece. It is very important to develop your own personal image bank. Not only you will have original material, the copyright to those photos will also totally belong to you. Here are some cityscapes related photo that I have taken in China and States. I'm going over them quickly to see what are the interesting elements that I can use in my concepts. After looking through the reference, I have a solid idea of what kind of shapes and silhouettes that I want to have for this image. Now I'm dragging photo reference in Photoshop in order to extract the shapes that I want to have. You can use whatever selection method that you feel comfortable with, such as color range, lasso tool, masking tool, etc. I usually tweak the contrast a little bit. It allows you to have a better result later when you use it to create custom shape. Now we are going to make our selections into custom shapes. Select your shape through channels. Try different channels to have different results. Invert selection. Press M on your keyboard. Right click. Select make work path. Give a tolerance of 0.5 to have a very precise path on your selection. Go to Edit and press Define Custom Shapes. Now you can find your custom shape under the Shape tool. I'm repeating the same process to make few different building shapes. You will use them to construct your cityscape. Now, when you have all your set ready, drag and drop freely the shapes on the canvas to make interesting compositions. Think about silhouettes, depth, lighting direction when you are creating those thumbnails. You can create a large volume of sketches in a very short amount of time. Do you see how fun and fast this process can be? Imagine how those sketches can become a valuable point for discussing the art vision with your art director.
Now I take a small break and step back from the computer to study the visual possibilities that I got so far. I select the one that I find having most potential, combining it with few elements from other thumbnails to have my final sketch. I tweak further the overall shapes, values, and contrast, and add some billboards with very bright values. I give the first color base by using the adjustment layers. I want to have warm artificial light source around the bottom part of the buildings and have the top part of the buildings merging slowly with a cold, dark sky. I use hue saturation adjustment layer first. Tick on the colorize box and play with the hue slider. Click on OK when you are satisfied with the color choice that you have. I drag a gradient on the mask layer so all the warm colors only affects the bottom part of the image. Then I continue with another column balance layer and a hue saturation layer to make the dark blue background. Then I pick a sketching brush to put some color noise in the shaded area. It gives a very nice painting feel. The default charcoal Photoshop brushes can work pretty nicely if you don't have your own brush set. Do it loosely to have some fun sketching around. I usually go with my instinct for this step without too much analytical thinking. I develop personal swatch to advance my coloring phase. I take few lighting references that I like, decrease the size about 500 pixel wide, go to the filter gallery, texture, and patchwork. I make the square a bigger size and take off the depth. I don't need a depth value since I'm making a swatch. Now I can color pick from those swatches to have few saturated lights in my scene.
to increase the photorealism by dropping some photo textures. Feel free to erase part of photos to make them sit in the pictures. When you erase part of the textures, it's possible to have some extra shapes through the erased part. Try to see if they can trigger some of your imagination and come up with new shapes. I drag different photos for different purposes, such as extracting some nice foreground shapes or to enhance the lighting. Putting some highlights is an easy way to give the illusion of details. Take a hard brush, put some hard lines down, then erase loosely part of it with a texture brush to achieve a random feeling. The highlights have to be consistent with your light source. Think about the lighting situation first.
I always have a set of random characters that I can put in my environments. They are great to create a contrast in terms of scale and create a living, breathing world for the image. You can use the custom shape or custom brush techniques to have different sets of characters, such as civilians, soldiers, robots, etc. I integrate some crowd in the image And to enhance the fancy feeling, I have put a robot silhouette to contrast with the scale of the human crowd. I do more extra brush work on the overall painting to blend all the elements together. For this stage, I often use a brush that mimics the traditional brush, such as oil brush or watercolor brush. This step usually gives that extra layer of personal artistic style. You can approach it differently by simplifying the shapes or to bring more color vibrancy into the image.
I also love to use Artreach to complete this step because it has a complete set of painting tools mimicking the traditional painting feel. I always like to give a subtle zoom blur to my painting to give it a sense of motion. This can also to help to blend the photo textures and your brush strokes together. First, merge your image on your layer. Then you can blur this by going to Filter, Blur, Racial Blur, and select the zoom option. Give an amount of about 10 pixels. I usually combine my zoom layer with the masking tool. I apply gradient on a mask, so only the bottom part is revealed. I like finalizing my painting with a color operation and a sharpen filter. For doing the color operation, go to Filter, Lens Correction. Click on the Custom tab and play with chromatic operation sliders. Try out a few different settings to see what fits your personal preference the best. Then for the sharpening part, go to Filter, Sharpen, and Sharpen the mask. Feel free to play with the amount, radius, and threshold setting to see what kind of results you can get. 
Usually, more the ratios get bigger, more the noise pixel gets bigger. Now, we can also apply a photo layer to have an overall color adjustment on the image. Now, we are finally done with the painting. I really hope that you have enjoyed this workshop and have learned few digital painting tricks from it. Thanks for watching. If you want to also try out the custom shapes, I have uploaded my collection on Gumroad. It includes more than 100 custom shapes, including mechanical parts, landscape, and cityscape shapes. You will also get the original PSD of the mood painting within the package. If you ever get a chance to try them out, let me know how effective you find them and if they are useful for the brainstorm process, as I am always very curious about your feedbacks. Thanks for watching! Ciao for now!